Tony, I mean, mate, we are all feeling for you. Six weeks, it's a bloody long time, isn't it? Well, it is, and I've got to say, it's uh, it's, it's upsetting, it's demoralising. Uh, we feel as though we've been completely ostracised from the rest of Australia. We we almost feel cheap and dirty, I've got to say. And, you know, any, any confidence that we were regaining on the back of the first lockdown was just stripped away yesterday when Daniel Andrews, you know, stood before everyone and announced this new six-week lockdown. But I suppose... You know, the, the, the emotions of this absolute roller coaster in Victoria at the moment because Daniel Andrews has not only slapped us in lockdown, but he's just slapped us across the face as well by saying, effectively, it's our fault. Well, Daniel, here's the thing, mate. It's not our fault, right? It's not our fault. And the people of Victoria are getting sick and tired of having to burden the load here because of you stuffing up. And you've done that with the security guards outside the quarantine hotel. So let's not let's not pull any punches and let's not try to uh, you know gild the lily here. Daniel Andrews stuffed this up, not the people of Victoria. And I mean the cost of this, Matt. We're hearing this morning um, it's going to cost the economy a billion dollars a week. I mean you're going to have no choice now. JobKeeper and JobSeeker they are going to have to go past September. Well, Ali, uh, they do cost a lot of money, and uh, this is a big impact on our economy. When you think about five million Australians now in lockdown, that's one in five Australians. Uh, and so, look, I hope the people of Melbourne don't feel ostracised. Uh, uh, we're all Australians, and it's a big part, an important part of our country. Now, we're going to be there to support uh, all Australians as we have been. Uh, I do think we're going to have to look at JobKeeper. It cannot continue at $10 billion or so a month that's costing. Uh, so what we're going to have to do post-September is better target it and hopefully target it only to those areas where there's an impact, a lockdown, and or industries which are still struggling like tourism. Are you with TJ? You've got a bit of anger directed at Dan Andrews and his government? I think there'll be time for that, Ali. I'm, I'm trying to remain uh, positive and upbeat for our nation because I think we can uh, crush this again. Uh, when you look around the world, uh, the numbers we're seeing in Melbourne are nowhere near what you're seeing in many other countries. Uh, so well, we've got to yeah, take the hang positives. Hang on, hang on. That's all. That, but hang it's on. A, that, TJ. Okay, that's all very. Okay. OK, what we don't need is another Queensland senator telling us how we're feeling, OK? I think we've been down that path this week. I can tell you now, Matt, we are bleeding here. We are absolutely bleeding. And don't give us the old, you know, don't feel ostracised. We are. The Victorian border to New South Wales is shut. The Victorian border to South Australia is shut, OK? We are seeing numbers rise on a daily basis. We're seeing businesses behind me. They had a war chest the first time we were locked down. They don't have that now. They drew on all that. Right, there are shops today, even before before the official lockdown, shutting up shop. And what are they doing? And, you, you know, you, if you're going to review JobKeeper, you can't review it for Victoria because we need JobKeeper. You take that away and you've effectively stripped us of all hope. Well, that's all exactly what I'm saying, Tony, that we should better target it now to areas like if, if Melbourne is still in this situation, uh, come September, we should be looking at extending it in those areas because we should be supporting everybody in the country. And, and look, I, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you how to feel, mate. But I do think, I do think now we've got to just be determined and get on with it and do our best to crush this again. We did it a few months ago, we can do it again. But I mean, how do you just look at, at Victoria and look at nowhere else, Matt? In terms of JobKeeper, you mean, Ali? Mm. Well, I think we can. Obviously, we can tie it to those areas that remain in, with significant restrictions. Uh, uh, that's the economic impact uh, and the assistance need to be t needs to be tied to that. But keeping in mind, as I said, as I said, at the moment, this scheme costs us about $10 billion a month. To put that in context, we export about $8, $9 billion of iron ore a month. Mm. So the cost of this JobKeeper program is basically the entire size of our iron ore industry, with one of the biggest industries in this country. I mean, TJ, I reckon we can all feel your pain here this morning, but, I mean, you've got businesses, they survived the first shutdown. Look, you look at restaurants and cafes. They've just reordered supplies, they're ready to go. This is going to be the nail in, co in the coffin for so many businesses in your state. Well, that's right, because, as I said, they, ha they had a bit of a war chest to start off with, but they they've, they've dug into that. It's not there anymore. And, you know, I, 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 we're based in Docklands, Channel 9 in Melbourne. It is a, a hub of the city, if you like, because of Southern Cross Station. To walk across those platforms now... I got a train home uh, last week. I was the only person in that carriage. All right, so we hadn't fully recovered from the first lockdown. 
God only knows what's going to happen with the second lockdown. There's businesses today, as I said, Ali, that are shutting up shop. There are parents who are now coming to grips with the fact that they will again have to homeschool. They can't go through that again. It was a novelty to start with, and then it became an absolute bugbear for them. The students can't handle it. Uh, look, there's a whole range of things here that need to come into play. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound twee about it, but we, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a plane in the sky here because, you know, there are no visitors coming in on an international level or on a domestic level now. Yeah, look, I mean, I tell you, it's tough. And Matt, I wonder if we should all be looking at Victoria now. The rest of us, we're starting to enjoy more freedoms. You've got to wonder, should the Queensland border still reopen on Friday? Oh, absolutely. I think it should, Ali. Uh, obviously, the decision's been made, though, not to open it to Victoria, given the situation there. Uh, but uh, we do need to get our economy re-going. And if we're going to provide more targeted assistance to some areas of our country, uh, that are continuing to do it tough or facing uh, surges in cases. We're going to have to have other parts of our economy opened up to pay for that. Mm. Uh, and and we, we, we must do that as soon as possible. And I'm glad the Premier finally made the decision to open the border and provide some relief to our long-suffering tourism businesses in this state. Yeah. And TJ, I tell you what, the AFL teams got out of Melbourne just in time, didn't they? There's now officially no sport in the sporting capital of Australia. No, that's right. I mean, the heartland is now the wasteland, Ellie. And, uh, I mean, you know, the AFL, I've got to say, is the least of our worries at the moment. Mm. They're OK. In fact, even then, you know, there's a bit of anger brewing because we're seeing on social media and in the newspapers and on our own news services shots of these guys in the water frolicking and, you know, laying by the pool. Well, look, they're not doing anything that we wouldn't do, OK? So whilst we, we envy them, there's also this uh, growing anger about it. But, look, that, that's their job. I mean, they've, they've walked away from their families for an extended period. Period. Not just the AFL, but you know, also the A-League teams, uh, the, the Melbourne Rebels in the Rugby Union competition, Melbourne Storm have become the gypsies of the NRL. So it's not just the AFL, but look, at, at least they're still working. Yeah, you know what? I was going to make a joke about you being on a train this, the other day, but um, by himself. I feel you by yourself, <laughs> but I feel it's all just a bit too grim down there, TJ, yeah. and you're a bit vulnerable. <laughs> No, no, I tell you, I, as soon as I said it, I thought, that's probably not a reflection of the corona crisis at the moment. It's probably just a reflection of me. But, uh, but anyway, feel free to... Feel free. Now, look, TJ, we love you and we're thinking of you and, and everyone in Melbourne at the yeah. moment in Victoria, OK? We've yeah. got you back. We love you.